This is Twit. We're here at the Interop Hot Stage Warehouse for another edition of Stuff My IT Guy Says. This time I'm sitting next to Mr. Mike Rydell. Mike, thank you very much for talking to us. Yep, glad to be here. You're, uh, you're from Xerus. You've been on the show a few times because, well, you just know everything about the wireless. And that's what we're talking about, wireless alphabet soup. You know all those little letters you see after the standard 802.11 A, B, G, N, A, C? Mike's going to tell us all about them. Tell me a little bit about the first two letters, B and A. And they actually do come in that order, right? Yes, they do. And B and A were both ratified very similar time frames in 1999. B supports up to 11 megabit data rate. A and B is in, two point, in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. A is in the 5 gigahertz spectrum, and it supports up to a 54 megabit data rate. Now, there are a lot of interesting give and takes between the two standards, but they really form the core, the foundation of every wireless standard that comes after because they were the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, technologies upon which Wi-Fi is formed. Now, give me a little bit of a comparison between the strengths and the weaknesses of 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz and vice versa. Five, uh, 2.4, some of the strengths are uh, it will generally propagate further, and right. that's because of the the, the wavelength. Mm -hmm. uh, five gig or 2.4, so better coverage. Some of the uh, downside of that is um, the number of channels. Now let's talk about those channels because I still have people who write me and say, "Oh, you're always talking about how there's only three channels, but in my AP or in my client, I see 11 or I see 14." What's the deal? Are, is, are there three channels or are there 14 slash 11 channels in 802.11b? There, there is a, 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 some chunk of spectrum in the 2.4 band worldwide that's carved up into 14 5 megahertz wide channels. What we talk about, the three channels, well of those 14, only 11 of them are, are usable in the U.S. But of those 11, in the 802.11 spec, in the 2.4 BG and N uses uh, a 22 wide 22 megahertz wide yeah. channel. So let's do the math. Five, yeah. five megahertz wide, wide channels, 22 megahertz of usage, which means that it actually overlaps, right? You yes. go over channels. So our magic numbers are one, six, six, and 11. If you're using anything other than that, it, you're not actually getting a different channel, right? You're, you're really overlapping. In fact, right. uh, if you look at the signal in a, in a signal analyzer, you can see the curve. And if those curves touch from, from different devices operating in supposedly different channels, you're getting interference, which means you're retransmitting, which means your data rate goes down. Yes, okay. you will see a significant performance degradation if, for example, you use channel one and channel three. Yeah, because they're right next to each other. Now let's go over to five gigahertz. Five gigahertz, I've heard, are, have, have 21 channels. Now, do you get that same overlap? I mean, if, if I put something in channel 38, and something in channel 39, am I, am I going to see those two waves touch? Right. I mean, for example, channel 36, channel 40, 44, and 48. There is, to answer your question, there is 21 channels. But in, five giga, in the 5 gigahertz spectrum, they're non-overlapping. Ah. So you can use channel 36 and channel 40 on two radios that are within RF ear range of each other, and they're not going to co-interfere with each other. I like that. So in the B spectrum, in, in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, we've got... 14 or 11 channels in the United States with only three that are non-overlapping. Whereas in the five gigahertz spectrum, you've got 21 channels, 21 non-overlapping. Yes, which okay. becomes very important when you're doing RF reuse and trying to build out a good proper design of a wireless network. Now let's push it a little bit forward, uh, forward because we know that 2.4 gigahertz, gigahertz propagates better. It goes through walls. I mean, you've seen that. If you've got a dual band router in your home or in your office, your B signal always goes further than your A signal, and that has to do with the way that those waves propagate, because five gigahertz actually has a smaller wave, correct? That's, that's correct. The wavelength in 2.4 is roughly five inches. It's roughly three or a little bit less in five gigahertz. The other side of that with the difference between B and A is the data rates. B goes clear down to a data rate of one, therefore mm -hmm. the uh, modulation techniques that are used actually carry further. So mm -hmm. that's another reason why you'll see that in the 2.4 that seems to connect connect you further than the 5 gigahertz. So that's the start of our alphabet soup. And then we move over. Here we have a device that does only 802.11b, so only 2.4 gigahertz. Here's a device that does 5 and 2.4 gigahertz, but only 802.11b and a. 
here are devices that do 802.11G, so 2.4 gigahertz, B and G, and then this one does, I believe, A, B, G, and N. That's correct. So dual band. As we move forward, what do we see in the data rates? I mean, uh, we, we said at the very beginning that all the technologies are based on the B and G standards. Uh, how is that? When I look at G or when I look at N, what am I really looking at? Well, for example, we talked about 802.11B. Its maximum data rate is 11 megabits. When we move to having some A technology at the same time, that was a 54 megabit uh, data rate technology. In 2004, 802.11B, G was ratified, and that's in the 2.4 band, but now that's a 54 megabit data rate. Then, as we moved along in time and was able to, uh, in 2007, or 2009, 802.11n was ratified, and depending on the uh, spatial streams, how much frequency you use, whether you're doing channel bonding, you can go up to a three, uh, 450 megabit data rate. Right. And now none of these devices support the newest kid on the block. That's 802.11ac. And 802.11ac is actually not just building up on the foundation of the old B and A devices. It incorporates a few new technologies, things like the, the, the ability to truly talk to multiple devices rather than slicing up your, your radio time between them. Are we seeing the next generation of Wi-Fi with AC, as, I, as I've often heard it called, is it not just a building up on old technologies, but really sort of a reimagining of what Wi-Fi does? Well, what it is, is it's, it's taking advantage of the throughput capacity of a single radio. Because as we talked about uh, a single channel being 22 megahertz wide, what you get with in, you can actually bond and have 40 megahertz wide channels. With the first wave of AC, we'll be able to bond 80 megahertz worth of spectrum and channel, uh, you know, in that case, four channels wide on a single radio. So we continue to scale what the capacity of a single radio does. Okay. Now, last question, and that is, should someone only be looking for the last standard? You see this all the time whenever they advertise specs for, you know, new laptops, new devices. It'll say, oh, I support 802.11. Uh, BGN or I support 802.11ac. If, if I get the latest letters, does that mean that that's all I need, that's all I want? Just just buy the latest letters and be done with it? Uh, two two things of, of guidance there. If, you, if you're buying a device and you only care about 2.4 gigahertz, if it says BGN, that means it supports 2.4. If it says ABGN, supports 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and if it support, says it supports ABGNAC, it's going to support to the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. And if it only says AC, it only supports 5 gigahertz. More than likely. We're not quite, AC is not ratified yet, mm -hmm. and I've not seen a device that says only AC. But if it did only say AC, you need to realize that's probably only going to support ANAC devices in the 5 gigahertz.